May I now request our guest of honor, Professor M. P. Singh, Honorable Chancellor, Central University of Haryana, Mahindragar, to kindly interact with us on the subject of constitution. I told you earlier also that though on the one hand we say that Dr. Ambedkar is the father of the constitution, here we have a person who's been writing books on constitution, which almost all of us might have read. We have assembled here today to celebrate uh, the birth of our constitution in 1949. And the idea is, of course, to analyze both the merits and the demerits of the Constitution. But uh, generally, it happens, and that is the tradition, that on the birthday, we do not normally point out the mistakes of the person or weaknesses. Rather, we tell about its strengths. And if there are any weaknesses, actually, they have to be removed. They have to be improved upon. And this is what uh, uh, Mr. Lakey actually has done very forcefully. I had come with the idea, just as he had to change his speech, I had also come with some sort of uh, academic speech on the uh, subject. But I need not go back on uh, that now. Uh, for the uh, simple reason that uh, the issue actually has been presented uh, in a uh, manner that uh, it focuses in the other direction. And that direction, I think, uh, with the clarifications which uh, Mr. Lakey has uh, uh, given, uh, doesn't require any further amplification. But uh, definitely, so far as I am concerned, I have been uh, teaching uh, constitution. Of course, uh, uh, I was born uh, much before the making of the constitution. But uh, I was also there when the constitution was made. Did not uh, uh, actually in any way could have any access to what was happening in the constituent assembly. but. Uh, uh, very soon after the commencement of the Constitution, I entered into the field of uh, law. And therefore, from that time onwards, I have been seeing the evolution of the uh, Constitution. One fact in this uh, context is important, which uh, Mr. Lakey has pointed out, that throughout uh, the Asian uh, continent, except uh, uh, Japan, uh, and also throughout the African constitution, uh, African continent, perhaps also Latin American con uh, continent, there is no constitution. Uh, in Latin America, you can find some continuing, but with various changes. There is no constitution in uh, Asia or Africa which has worked so long as the Constitution of India has. You, you know that there is complete instability about the constitutions uh, uh, in whole of Asia, not only uh, with the countries around us, but uh, with other countries also. This is the same thing, same story with respect to West Asia. This is the same uh, story with respect to whole of Africa. Now, how is it that we Indians have been able to run a constitution for that long while others have failed on the same, uh, in the same process? The reason is that we have made this constitution uh, with that kind of discussion and that kind of understanding which we, the people of India, had at the time of discussions in the Constituent Assembly. And the way we have subsequently worked uh, the Constitution through our legislature and executive, as well as through the judiciary. It has not happened. That process has not taken place everywhere. 
and it is the result that the constitutions actually have not been successful in uh, other countries. It is only the stable Western countries where the constitution have been stable, but so far as the Asian and African countries are concerned, the constitution have not been successful. And the reason is that that kind of uh, uh, commitment to constitutionalism which the people of India have, both in the making of the constitution and the working of the constitution, not many people in the world have. And it is, therefore, the constitution has been working. The constitution has worked uh, very well in the circumstances in which we have lived. And therefore, we should have entertained no doubt that the constitution requires a revision or a review, or that we have to reconsider <coughs> the whole basis of the uh, constitution. It's a history, it's making, uh, to which uh, Mr. Lakey has referred very well, has to be ascertained as to whether the facts which uh, Mr. Singh told are, are really the facts. Did it really happen in the Constituent Assembly? Uh, uh, some of those things which he has uh, alleged or attributed to the Constitution or Constitution make, makers, it may be true that uh, Nehru as a leader of the country at that time may have influenced many of the decisions, but it is not that he has uh, actually uh, commanded every decision in the Constitution. The, uh, many things he may have not liked, but they have been brought into the Constitution. So Constitution is not any one man's uh, uh, creation. Even Dr. Ambedkar, if he later on refuted that uh, he has not made the Constitution, uh, the reason actually is that he was also not the only person who made the Constitution. There were persons who actually helped him in the making of the uh, Constitution, and uh, he incorporated the decisions of the Constituent Assembly as they were, uh, they were accepted by all the members of the Constituent Assembly. You might be knowing the fact that uh, there were hardly any occasions when voting took place in the Constituent Assembly. This is one of the factors or uh, which is very relevant for the adoption of the Indian Constitution, that the entire Constitution was adopted almost unanimously without any division in the Constituent Assembly. This is a rare thing which happens in the making of the Constitutions, but our Constituent Assembly did that. And for that, actually, uh, Grenville Williams has, uh, sorry, Grenville Austin has uh, admired our constitution uh, makers that uh, there is uh, some quality among Indians. Uh, he has uh, praised the Indian people that there is some quality among Indian people. And that quality is that they can decide things by consensus. Uh, and the other quality which uh, Indians have, the quality of tolerance. Now, these two, with these two qualities, that we were willing to tolerate differences and that we could smoothen our differences by, cons uh, uh, by consensus, these qualities actually have worked in the Constitution. And if the Constitution has worked so long, again, the uh, credit goes to the people of this country. It is not because the Constitution in itself alone has all the qualities that it could have run. If it could have run, it has run because the people of this country have a, constitu a Constitution bent of mind and they love to remain under a Constitution or work under a Constitution. They have not kept the Constitution completely in the same form in which it was originally made. Wherever difficulties arose in the working of the Constitution, we have made necessary changes in it. Already 101 uh, amendments of the Constitution have taken place. Many people say the co these amendments actually have changed the foundations of the Constitution. But uh, the uh, 
constitution makers among which judiciary is also part of it. Uh, lawyers like Mr. Lakey are uh, part of it. They have ensured that the basic structure of the constitution will not be amended, will not be changed. So, so far as the basic structure of our constitution is concerned, that remains as it was adopted on 26 November 1949. Now, it is that constitution which has been working with us. It is that constitution under which our government is kept uh, uh, within the rule of law or under uh, the uh, title of a constitutional government. There is a difference between the constitution and the government, that the constitution actually is prior to the government. Governments are created under the constitution, and therefore their existence results from the constitution, and it is the constitution, therefore, which they have to follow. Any day the government acts against the constitution, it can't work, it, its actions will be unconstitutional. Uh, we have provided system for that, and the courts are there for the purpose of holding the actions of the government as unconstitutional. One may say that the government may refuse to abide by the decision of the court. But again, uh, this is uh, a kind of wrong impression because we, again, the people of India, are not likely to disrespect anything which the Constitution asks us to do. And so far as our courts are concerned, they are the last authority to interpret the Constitution. And the government is under an obligation to go by that interpretation. Therefore, the court's interpretation will have to be accepted. It is another matter that the difference of opinion may exist. But once the meaning of the Constitution has been expressed by our courts, that meaning would be accepted. The, the uh, one thing on which uh, uh, I would like to emphasize, which the Constitution has its own peculiarity, that uh, in, a, in a time when uh, liberalism and the liberal constitutions were being framed all over the world, the Constitution of India actually went a little uh, further. Though, of course, they did not write uh, the word socialist in their preamble at that time. But uh, many things which a social state is required to do, and uh, a social state is the state which actually cares for all the citizens of the country, their needs and their requirements, and not only defends what are called the social, what are called the civil and political rights, but it also defends what are called as the social, economic, and cultural rights of the people. Some of the rights have been expressly mentioned in the uh, Constitution. Uh, in the fundamental rights chapter itself, but others have been mentioned in the directive principles of state policy. At that time, it was considered that perhaps the directive principles of state policy require actions on the part of the government, which the government may not fulfill in view of number of other problems. Therefore, the courts were kept separate from the enforcement of the directive principles of state policy. But in course of time, our courts have also, uh, uh, through interpretation of the Constitution, have actually uh, enforced number of the uh, directive principles of state policy. For example, as you know, by interpreting the word life under Article 21 of the Constitution, much that has to be done for the social rights, that is, all those basic necessities of life by which a person can live a dignified life, that has been provided through one of the fundamental rights in the Constitution. And the government is under an obligation to see that the social rights of the people are also fulfilled. We are actually far behind in this area compared to many 
other countries and particularly European countries where a charter of fundamental rights has now been uh, included in the uh, uh, Lisbon Treaty of 2007 in which actually all social rights have and the civil and political rights they have been put into one category and uh, the state ensures that every individual lives with dignity grows with dignity and uh, just by way of example that uh, education for example in whole of europe people can get without paying any fee there is no requirement of fee even for doing phd and therefore the state takes the responsibility of educating every person in that country that is a fundamental right i am sorry that in our country instead of going in that direction we are following america where uh, the education is being privatized by and by uh, please excuse me because i am in a private university but uh, i am talking of the constitutional goals and the progression uh, in the world with respect to uh, social rights that uh, uh, the state should not actually uh, give up its responsibility or shirk its responsibility of ensuring that uh, everyone becomes capable of living a life of dignity, which you read out from the preamble. The word dignity was not dignity of every individual. Dignity of individual, the, this expression was not added in the preamble later on. This was in the original preamble of the Constitution. And dignity of the individual actually is the most important aspect of the preamble. And that we should ensure through whatever action is uh, taken. Let us work on the Constitution. And let us see that under the same Constitution, we continue to grow the way we have continued to grow so far. Uh, Mr. Lakey has said that we should not move towards the chaos of unconstitutionalism. We should rather move towards a better governance, towards a better uh, society. And all that which is required for that, for that you can find the guidance in the uh, Constitution, including the guidance which has been given in the, direct, in the fundamental duties uh, the, uh, the interesting thing is that uh, uh, yesterday all the papers actually uh, printed the chapter from the constitution on, on, on fundamental duties, N nothing on rest of the constitution, only fundamental duties were, uh, were printed in, the, in all the newspapers, even if it is an advertisement. That advertisement actually is for the purpose of uh, uh, telling us, telling every individual that the Constitution, along with rights, also imposes uh, duties. And uh, rights cannot be claimed without performing your duties properly. That is what Gandhi said, because all rights emerge from du uh, duties well performed. So we hope that all those ideals, whether in the form of rights or in the form of duties, and the way the governments have to function, uh, which the Constitution incorporates, let us cherish them and let us work for them. I think with these words, uh, a general speech. <laughs> uh, thank you very much.